Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game preview, another special Kickstarter preview. And today I'm very excited to check it out. Welcome to the Jungle from Coffee Cake Gaming. This is for two to four players, taking about one to two hours to play, and it's for ages 14 plus. And in Welcome to the Jungle, you're going to play as various different animals who are actually kind of like drug dealers, and they're going to be trying to run the city by taking over different turfs and eventually leveling those turfs up so they can be the kingpin of their area and gain some special ability. It has a little bit of hand management card combat. It's got a little spinner you're going to be spinning on. It's got some gambling and some other various different aspects in it. Let's open it up and I'll show you how it works. All right then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Welcome to the Jungle. Before we get started, I do want to mention this is the promotional copy in front of me, so take everything you see here with a grain of salt. So first and foremost, handy dandy rule booklet. It's eight pages of a roundabout. It's probably going to be double-sided. It's going to have probably pictures and illustrations and whatnot. It has spots that say picture of weapon card with label on here. So yeah. Uh, and it should have you up and running pretty smoothly. Learning the game is actually really simple because it is a really simple game. So in Welcome to the Jungle, you're going to have various different turf spots all around the board. And you're vying for control of those spots by upgrading the spots and potentially having turf wars. Uh, if you're at the end of the game, if you're the person who has the most of those spots controlled, then you win the game. So the game's going to end when someone has either the majority of them or when all of them are controlled, at which point whoever has the most wins the game, and at which point if there's a tie, whoever has the most and then has the most in goodies and money, these are the goodies right here, they will win the game. So let's go over the components, let's get into the gameplay, and I'll walk you through a mock turn because it is a really simple mock turn to walk through. So first we got ourselves the board, and let's just focus on the turfs first. So you're going to have six different turfs out in play. If you're playing at the full player count, if you're playing with less players, then you'll have less turfs. Each turf is going to start with a level one street cred starter. And this is what you need to do to capture this turf. So this one, you just need four of this plant. The plants are drugs, pretty much. They're, they're, they're drugs. And you're, if you have the four, then you'll capture it and you'll be able to put your little token on there. And I'll explain how that works a little bit later. Next, you're going to have the weapons depot, which will be cycling weapons through here. These are weapons you're going to be able to buy. And you'll be able to equip them on your crew when you have crew battles, turf wars. And I'll explain how that works later. But what you need to know is cost in the upper right hand corner. That's how much damage it does. And these are bonus modifiers because you can put different pieces of weapon on different crew, which will give them small bonuses or potentially big bonuses. Next we have Smash and Grab. These are special cards I'll show you in a second. And crew cards, which I will once again show you in a, in a second. Uh, you also get the character backstories. In case you want to know. Cool. And then you're going to get a whole bunch of little components over here. So let's take a look at those. You're going to have money in 1 in 500 increments. And then you're going to have a whole bunch of these little goodies right here. There are a couple different kinds of goodies. They will have different value. And the value is all on your handy dandy little player aid card. Which is actually super useful. Uh, right here. We'll go you through a round. And also tell you how you can sell stuff. Uh, how much you can sell stuff for. And how much you can buy stuff for. So let's just go ahead and walk you through a mock round and you get a feel for how the game works. So first things first, you're going to spin the wheel and there is a, an actual spinner that you're going to be utilizing right here. And uh, before you actually spin it, everyone has the opportunity to wager on one of the sides right here. Most of the time people don't ever do it because it's one in four odds you're going to lose everything because you're either going to double up, which is humongous, or you're going to lose everything, which likewise can be humongous. But you spin the spinner and you get what's on it. So right now I would get $100, but I could potentially get $1,000, or I could potentially get uh, one of the different drugs in the game, or I could get a smash and grab card, or I could have been robbed. If you are robbed, that means you lose absolutely everything you have. You could have, you know, uh, $500 and three plants that you're saving to do something big this turn with, and they're all gone. So you have to completely replan from that. Next, you're going to draw a smash and grab card, step number two. And there's a couple different kinds of smash and grab cards. Let's see if I can get one. Oh, perfect. These ones, you don't have to do anything with right now. You just put them face down, and you can use them later during a turf war. They'll have this big fist symbol right here. So this one, add plus two to each crew card played in this battle. Wow, that is hugely, hugely powerful. Uh, next, this one. Uh, these ones you play instantly, and you just read them out loud. So this one, sometimes they come back. Some crew members are trying to cut you out of your goodies sales. Oh, no, they're trying to cut you out of the drug sales. You solve the problem 
lose a thousand dollars. I don't know what how you solve the problem, but you lose a thousand bucks if you have a thousand bucks, which once again, that, that could be really huge. Uh, sales are up on your turfs. Collect five hundred dollars per turf run. Wow. So let's just say that I happen to have control of uh, two turfs at the moment. That would be a thousand bucks. Fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, you probably know how to do uh, math. So there you go. Wow. Hugely powerful cards. And these things, uh, they do vary. Some are very powerful. Some are not as powerful. But you're going to draw one of them. And let's just pretend I got this one. And you're going to do whatever it says on it. Or you're going to put it down in front of you if it has a fist. Next, you go to a weapons depot transaction where you can buy or sell a weapon if you would like. And you'll have three weapons to choose from all the time. And it's pretty self-explanatory. You pay the money and you buy a weapon and a new thing comes out. Also, at the end of a round, once everyone has had a turn, uh, you're going to cycle the oldest weapon, which in this case would be this, out. It goes to the bottom of the deck and you flip over a new card. Uh, you also can sell weapons you have. It doesn't actually specifically say if there's some sort of modifier in the rules. So I'm assuming you just get face value for whatever you sell. So if you happen to acquire a weapon and then you decide, yeah, I don't really want it, then you can sell it back for money. Especially because the next phase is the goody transaction phase. And the goody transaction phase is where you're going to acquire a lot of your drugs so you can take over the different parts of the city. And uh, it pretty much goes from left to right least expensive to most expensive, and you can buy this one for 100 this one costs you 800 to buy, and then you're going to sell them for even more. Now, the big thing to know about this is you can only do, uh, you can do up to five transactions, because you can do one transaction per good. So, take for instance, you could buy, sell, buy, 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 but you could not buy and then sell this, because that would completely break the game, because you could buy, you know, uh, one of these, and then sell it for 300, then buy three of these, and sell it for 900, then buy nine of these, and buy it for 20, 2700. Once again, you know how to do math. So, uh, yeah. So you can only buy or sell each one per turn. And then that gets to the main phase, the biggest phase in the game, which is the turf action phase. And you have four choices. You can take over unclaimed turf, raise street cred level of a turf, <coughs> you control or declare a turf war or pass. Let's talk about the easiest one first. Passing. Hey guys, I pass. I don't have any money. There you go. He turns over. Next person goes. Simple as that. They spin the spinner. Take over an unclaimed turf is also really simple. So let's take a look at this turf right here. So this one right here, let's pretend that I happen to have that good and I happen to have $200. Well, I'll say, yeah, I'm turning this in and I'm turning $200 in. And now I am in charge of this turf right here. So this Level 1 card goes away. A level 2 card goes out, which makes it slightly more difficult to get. And now I am in control of this area. Very simple. So, the next action you can take is you can raise Street Kid level of a turf you control. You guessed how you're probably going to do this one? If you happen to have two berries and one of the red things, then you would upgrade it to, you guessed it, level 3. And there you go. Simple as that. Now, the last one you can do, and the most intricate one you can do that's going to, you know, in introduce the turf war aspect of the game, is you can have a turf war. So let's say that this guy is over here and I want to start a turf war. First thing is I have to have the requirements of this card. So this is a level one card. This would not actually happen, but let's pretend it's a level two card. I pay those requirements, lay them down, and now me and this guy are going to get it on. One of us is going to end up winning this turf, which will upgrade to level two. Doesn't matter who wins it, this turf is now going to be upgraded to whatever the next level is in this particular scenario. So how this, a turf war, works is you are going to draw 15 crew cards a piece. So you get 15 of them, so let's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we got 15 crew cards. You also have to use any of your smash and grab or weapon cards. You have to say that you're using them before you get into the turf war. So yeah, I will use this card and then take a look at some of the cards. And the cards look confusing at first, but they're actually really simple. Simple. So how it works is uh, you're going to choose 10 of these cards that you would like to keep. Wow, that is... That is a powerhouse combination right there. These are worth 15. That is the highest number you can get. And since I can play these both at the same time, uh, they double. So this would be worth 30 points. If I had another one, they'd be worth some insanely... Uh, so right now, this is 60 points right here. 15 points. Boom. Now it's worth 30 and 60. So let's do it with another card. So let's say this one's worth 2 points, and I put another one right here. They're now both worth 4 points a piece. So 4 points, and then 8 points for the invisible one that I put on there. 
So let's keep what I want to keep. So obviously keeping those two, those are fantastic. The ones are really good as well. Ooh, there we go. We got a set right here. Uh, actually, Sammy the Saint's not. But the other one is because it lets you take a card off of somebody. So I'm going to use Sammy the Saint. Do I have any more Sammy the Saints? That'd be spectacular. I do not, but I do see two misdemeanors here. So you know what? I might keep those. Oh, wow. I got another 15. Wow, this is going to be a great fight for me couple eights i have a six which yeah let's talk about this one so this one is one of the ones that has a weapon so this is worth six but if you happen to put a weapon on top of it that is the brass knuckles or that has the brass knuckles symbol then these guys are now worth 10 so they get way way more powerful and that does include the multiplier because you don't actually play a weapon on an animal you can also play you don't have to play it on an animal i should say you can also play it on a gang which will make more sense in a minute so many cards do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll just pick the highest numbers. Do, 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 do. Eight, nine, and ten. So there we go. Discard these. Boop. Crew discard. And then you're going to start the war. Uh, so depending on which round it is, someone different is going to start the round. So let's just say uh, I go ahead and do, you know, I'll, I'll start off big. I'm going to start off swinging. I'm going to lay down a 15. They're going to lay down their card right here, and they might lay down this one, which is really powerful. Removes opponent's last played crew card. So that is huge for them. They have one, and I now have zero. And I immediately am just distressed, but I'm still going to play out my 15. Still going to come out firing. So I got my 15 now. They next play a card, and you're going to play a crew card back and forth. It's not like, um, say, for instance, other games of this ilk, like Blue Moon, where they actually have to beat you. They just have to keep playing cards back and forth. Now, eventually, you're going to be able to pass when you want to pass. However, when you pass, the other person can play as many cards as they would like, but this is all about hand management because if you do end up playing three or four cards to beat somebody, you're going to be left with only a few cards left, and you're going to be going a best out of three series now the very first round you have to play three cards but after that you can play as few or as many as you would like you have to play at least three cards i should say so let's see what this guy's got next he's got himself a three because he's a moron uh i'll lay down this six right here and he'll lay down this one and i don't know what he's doing i guess he's just getting his weak cards out of the way so he's got five I'm sitting at 21. I've played three cards. I would just stop right now. And then this guy would probably stop and just concede this round. Or he would keep going if he was foolish. But you're going to do that and it's going to be best out of three. Now eventually you could play this card. And I would probably play it in round number two. And just try and finish him off. Add plus two to each crew card played in this battle. That's incredibly powerful. Um, but that would get discarded. All these would get discarded. And whoever won would then have control of this turf. So I crushed his face in. This already got upgraded, and boom, you'd go about your merry way. And those are the actions you're going to do during that phase. And then your next person is going to go. You rinse, wash, repeat until all of these spots have level 5 on them, level 5 kingpin, which also means you're going to unlock a special ability. So if you're the level 5 kingpin on a spot, no one can take it over from you, but you're also going to get a one-time-per-round special ability. Keep a used weapon card after a turp war. Turn any opponent crew member card in play against them. Draw an extra crew card, Cree card, at the beginning of a turp war. That's supposed to be crew. Mayhu. There you go. That's what you're going to get inside of Welcome to the Jungle, and that is my preview for Welcome to the Jungle.